Well, that was last week in New Hampshire, and those activists were from Massachusetts chapters of Black Lives Matter. And they join us here tonight. Denisha Yancey is the lead organizer of Black Lives Matter in Boston, and Julius Jones is the lead organizer for Black Lives Matter in Worcester. And thank you both for being here this evening. Now, first of all, let me say thanks for joining, for, for sharing the video with us. I think it's important in a democracy to see how candidates respond. How are you feeling about that encounter, or what are you thinking about that encounter? How did you come away from it in terms of your impressions of Mrs. Clinton? I feel as if the encounter was good. I, it it moves a conversation about race in the United States to a newer and, and deeper level. Uh, in other parts of the video, she goes on to talk about how she doesn't actually believe that you can change hearts in the United States and that the way to affect change is through systemic change. And at the same time, she was also ducking personal responsibility for the role that her and her family played in it too. And so it was... Uh, I think a, a moment of reflection for her to, to say that she doesn't actually feel like you can move this issue forward other than through policy, mm -hmm. even though the policy mistakes that she and the Clintons made got us in large degree to the situation that we are in today with mass incarceration. So I, part of what I'm wondering is what the right answer looks like. And that's a little bit of an unfair question um, mm -hmm. because I don't think there's any, uh, you know, it wasn't as though you all were playing a gotcha where there's some mm -hmm. one right answer. But we've seen now Black Lives Matter activists show up for candidates a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I guess part of what I'm wondering is, so what looks like an encounter that is accountable, that is sort of recognizing the, the position that the movement is in at this point? What we were looking for from Secretary Clinton was a personal reflection on her responsibility for being part of the, the cause of this problem that we have today in mass incarceration. Um, and so her, her response um, really targeting on policy um, wasn't sufficient for us. If President Obama were running for re-election, if, if it were his second term as opposed to him finishing, would you be making the same kinds of challenges as President Obama? Absolutely. Certainly. I would say that all the presidential candidates this year uh, can definitely expect to be challenged on this issue, um, and absolutely Obama would be as well. So part of the reason I'm, I'm asking that is some folks, um, you know, I've been sort of watching it through social media are saying, well, why would you go after Democrats? Because after all, these are the folks who are, you know, whatever your gripe with them, they're better on these issues and what the alternative would be. And this is particularly, I think, been emerging around Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. Bernie's the good guy. Don't go mess with Bernie. What do you say to that? I think that the rage that emerged out of the progressive liberal reaction to some of the shutdowns was indicative of this um, covert anti-blackness that exists in the, in the Democratic Party. And it's important to say that there's a new kind of leadership that's emerging with the Black Lives Matter movement that's not wed to the Democratic Party. And what ended up happening was people were perfectly willing to throw two black women under the bus for a, a white candidate who is the man with the fastest rising privilege in the United States. He's, he's drawn huge crowds. And because Bernie Sanders couldn't speak, they were telling Black Lives Matter to not speak, to allow him. And it seemed like a, like, a, like a disconnect to me because we, as African Americans in the Black Lives Matter movement, are Americans. And political engagement is what it seems like folks are always asking of the black community. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes, if it don't come the way that they want it, then it's, it's sit back down, sister. It, is, it has been one of the most fascinating and just from a kind of journalistic perspective, enjoyable or pleasurable aspects of watching this movement has been an absolute insistence that you won't play respectability politics like that that and, and that respectability politics has been the framework of so much of civil rights and mm -hmm. anti-racism movements before this moment is that a strategic choice is it is it just sort of born of the moment is it part of the conversations that you have together as you are working on strategy it absolutely is strategic, and it, it also is just the way that we're going to get free. Uh, we we understand that we have to work from the margins, and we have to take everyone with us, um, because if you know you you take the 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 folks that are in the on the sidelines, um, and then everyone can can excel. What do you hope to see from Hillary Clinton going forward after this encounter? Hillary Clinton has a unique responsibility in the role in mass incarceration. The divestment that we saw from the, from the 
urban housing program that from HUD, they divested $17 billion. And then they also invested $19 billion in prison construction. Like that happened under the Clinton administration. And so what we'd like to see from the Clinton campaign is an intentionality in, in how she deals with that. Because right now she's talking around it. Mm -hmm. um, that there needs to be some ownership and hopefully there can be some some national ownership of that of the fact that there's white violence that occurs against the black community in in large part and that we need to reverse that stream of funding from prisons back into low-income